So, good afternoon. The subject matter is shadow integration. I've totally got this dilemma that is literally rocking my world to the core. I've got to either change my perspective or change my habits. I figured this would be a good lesson to share. This is very personal to me. But the Holy Spirit says that it will help others. And it'll help others to understand what I'm going through. So for all intensive purpo purposes, this is for my benefit as well. I use something called Kratom to manage my pain. Back in 2005, I nosed down to four-wheeler 65 feet off a cliff, night riding, and rolled it over myself. When I went to kick out, my knees totally hit the handlebars and I got locked in for the ride. So I rolled a quad over myself and then rode that quad 10 miles back to camp and then rode 30 miles into Yuma, where I woke up a week later with my back busted in like eight places. I had transverse process fractured like eight of my vertebrae and crushed my cervical spine, but my cervical spine doesn't hurt, so when they ask me about it, I just tell them, no, it doesn't hurt, just leave me alone. I've done a back surgery to try and correct it. I've done like everything non-invasive known to man to, uh, to, to try and take care of it. But I found no matter what, the addiction to the pills you know to feel no pain in a world full of only pain when you're an empath and all you feel is you know the world to suffering because everybody's suffering but they covered up everybody comes out wearing a mask but when you can feel through that mask not see through it but even though it's horrifying sometimes and and also in very there's beautiful things too when you see but when you're an empath and all you feel is everybody else and you don't have boundaries and you don't know how to just feel your own container basically feel your own vessel and you're feeling everyone else when you take pain meds it numbs the body you you know it numbs your empathic abilities basically down a bit it turns the volume down so I find I'm doing this with Kratom, basically, but I've just replaced one thing with another. Though it's, you know, it's natural, it's not pharmaceutical at all, it's just leaves off a tree ground up, and I'm actually about to take some, so, yeah. It's the wet season here in Arizona. And for a, a person with a back injury or a person with rheumatoid arthritis, any, you know, if you've got joint pain, a humid climate is not the place to be. And that being said, just monsoons in Arizona, they last for about three to four months and literally it can be miserable. I'm trying to do my best to just bring balance to it. Okay, so my body needs, you know, my body says, this so uh, route to go that's natural it's probably the best route that we've found so far that's not gonna kill you as long as you keep it in check so I want to keep it for my body's sake see I'm like the argument is actually going against itself even right now but there's light in this there's potential a lot with people, you know, there's, you know, it could be going the complete wrong way, but there, you see their potential. That's also not a great thing to follow if that's, because it's not what it is in the moment, only if a person or a thing chooses to be their potential in the moment, will it ever be realized? And so you can't rely on them saying, you can hope and pray, but sometimes you gotta, you know, if it's toxic, you gotta step out of it. It's, you're gonna bear their punishment with them. So, back to back to my dilemma. I also use marijuana as like an anxiety medication, 
or at least that's my excuse, which I do have really high anxiety from my spiritual abilities. I'm caught, I find now I'm literally trying to help others and I'm finding the answers for myself even in this. <clears throat> Oh man, that was heavy. Ouch. So. Dang. Oh man, I keep getting. I keep getting. They lusted for the meat pots of Egypt. So they wandered the desert for 50 years. Ouch. I guess that's basically selling your soul. For comfortability. So I see I have some real work I've got to do. It's not easy. Especially, you know, when... When your knob feels like it's just turned all the way up and somebody ripped the damn knob off. It's overwhelming, especially since for, you know, sensually, it's overwhelming the sensory system of the body, which thus when the body is, and the mind are connected, it overwhelms the mind too. And literally it makes it hard for me to even function. Some days are way bad. Some days are way great. But for a Libra, we're constantly doing this number and it's keeping everything in balance because you are both Lucifer in this world but Lucifer also brings the light within the shadow is the light so I I guess you could say I am bipolar by nature my very being is embodied karma I'm the embodiment of judgment What comes after is pending on the choices out of the encounter, I guess, post the inspiration. Because I find that that's more my purpose in life, that I drop, I don't know, the Holy Spirit drops these little bombs out of my mouth even without me being consciously aware that that's what that person actually needed. And I don't know, he says I inspire people. Which I'm truly blessed that, you know, but... I understand that the catalyst for change can be overwhelming and to see yourself in a mirror or to see, you know, what you, to in by comparison when you see your own shadow in comparison to someone's light subconsciously and unconsciously you may be terribly happy for that person, but I say terribly happy for that person thank you Holy Spirit for giving it like that that makes perfect sense terribly happy because as they smile in your face and they tell you how proud they are and how happy they are for you as they walk away they're going why can't that happen to me why why are they different from me why do they get that and I don't it seems like they get all their prayers answered but none of mine have even been heard that leaves people feeling envious, jealous, and it, it moves the ego in deceitful ways, even unconsciously. It's like, wow, I didn't even know I was doing that until it was blowing up in my face. Wow. Just dropping some heavy stuff today. Wow. But these are things that we do subconsciously and unconsciously. It's not that that's what, you know, a lot of people are just along for the ride. I have a video I need to make about how demons use people as meat puppets and how energy moves from person to person. I've literally been across this country. Everything was the same except the faces had changed, but the energy was literally 110% on point. I could literally, I was calling them the names of the people here. 
the energy was 100%. Every character was there. Everyone that was needed was there energetically. This demon knew exactly who to bring in and how to bring them. I don't know. Well, I don't really want to do this now. Ah, oh, man. It's only the now. So, we're unconsciously manipulated. When you do not have the steering wheel of your vehicle, it's on autopilot, right? Like planes fly on autopilot. They have a planned system in it totally they punch in the gps coordinates they hit autopilot once they get up there they can get up go to the bathroom do their whole thing that plane is going to stay on and going right well think of it as like the ego has you on autopilot and the satan can literally because you're plugged in it can plug it at dang 11 11 it can plug into you because you're already jacked in. It's like the Matrix, what they were trying to convey there. That you're plugged in, so that any, any one of them can be an agent. Any one of them can flip. That's why, this is why people kill their families and then try and cover it up and stuff. Like, demonic stuff is what took place. It began as a thought form. And it transmigrated through other routes of thought. Where, it, where they entertained it and elaborated it and then co-created with it. It's how good people just snap out of nowhere. Anybody that is still plugged into the matrix is still one of them. Is still... I don't want to say his name and give him power, you know, that... That, you know, when you... Names and sigils. Names and written. Inscribed. Typing it, even. Okay, maybe you want them to know that. You take out the vowels. Because those are what give the sentence or the word life. It's the long, oh, long... It's what gives it its breath and depth. Vowels is what gives consonants life. It's what gives the word meaning. You take away the vowels and you take the power out. You take the power away from it. You'll notice that I, when I type things now, I type with an asterisk where the vowel goes. If you can't figure out the word, then, you know, type me and ask, you know, ask me, I'll totally help you out, but we've got to start taking the power away from these things, because they are very much so alive, very much so. Everybody thinks God's dead because they don't know him. They think they know him. I thought I knew him. Although it turns out I really did, you know, but that's the same for all of you. We think we know God, but we're so deceived. We know the other guy, the God of this world. It was created by the same creator as us, but refuse. Well, actually, he has a job. I can't say he refuses, but the angel of the Lord. I'm not sure 100% where that scripture is at, but the angel of the Lord, he said, see to it that you obey him. Because he will not relent. My word is in him. And he will not turn away from it. So, he means his punishments are real. You better do exactly as he commands. He gave the law. Because we denied our creator's love said, no, we want eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. We want, we, we want justice. We don't want love. We want justice. So, because we the people, he said, if that's what you want, let it be done unto you as you ask. And that's exactly what we got.
just us. It's just us now. Until we have love, we will not have the Creator here. Until all are one. Everybody, the Bible says that, well, everybody takes it as that Adam, Adam was kicked out of the garden. But when we sinned against God, it, it, it's totally different than what's in the Bible. It's so much more than that. Adam actually expelled God from here, from the physical world, because God can't be here anymore because it's beneath. He, he will, wow. That's why he separated me from all my friends. Not to say I'm above them in any way. God, I count myself with you. All of, every one of them. But when you entertain things that you know are not right, things that you know you could do so much better with your time, or things you know that they're not living in their potential. They are such vibrant, loving creatures, though. And their potential is amazing. However small the light, the light is still there. And when you can see the good in people, that's a blessing. But if it's not the fact of the matter in the now, if they're still choosing lesser, even though seeing the truth, seeing how very different life could be if they still consistently choose the same and never try to rise above that, then you can't remain with, with it. Because now, karmatically, you're now sharing their cross and you're sharing their punishment. That's what the cross is. It's your individual wound. Your vice. So, yeah, ouch. The things I still, wow, the, the cords I still have to cut in life. But that's literally a part of the road. It's a part of the journey. It's where roads separate. And through love, roads come back together. This world is round. So every time, no matter what, whenever we go, that we're gonna meet back. These roads always come back together. Always. Everyone must return from whence they came. Don't worry. Wherever you came from, you're going back to your personal heaven. Trust me. Wherever your soul is from, that's where you're going. And it's going to be heaven for you. It's going to be peace and rest. I guess that is not completely so. through the lower negative entities in this world that were born of the sons of God mating with women that, you know, they, the spirits that were made of the earth, that remain on the earth, they want to live out their desires still too. That's what they have. The fallen have desires still and they seek to fulfill them through the vessels. I guess karmatically, if you stay tied to that and keep choosing it, then you, wow. You could end up in a place that you really don't want to be. But our Father is patient, not willing that any should perish, that there are always chances for redemption to come out of that, but who wants to spend an eternity in that? It's like the fog of lost souls, you just don't long for the ride. Literally, as if you're not a conscious being, then you're an unconscious being. We all believe that we're conscious, really crazy, 
but it's a constant journey moving upward or downward. If you're staying stagnant, you got some choices that you're avoiding. Wow. There's a lot in here even for me. I might even have to start watching my own videos. Jesus, mercy. Might be a good idea, actually. But, uh, man, what else is there? Yeah, I think that's it for me. You guys have a great day. Will you all be healed, sealed, guided, and protected upon your path?